Here we see Knum fashioning a man's body to the left, while Thoth, ibis-headed ancient Egyptian embodiment of the cosmic force of time, counts the man's days on the right. Between them, weighing the man's soul, are Anubis, the jackal of death, and Sobek, the crocodile version in Egypt of the Greek three-headed blind dog Cerberus, guardian of the gateway to hell. The man's heart is on the left side of the scales, while a feather is on the right. To wrap all these anthropo anamorphic pantheons of embodiments of elemental forces forming a single unified model of the entire cosmos up into one, the Vedic, the Egyptian, and the Babylonian versions all express different points of view and ways to measure the same original system. If we consider Thoth as symbolic of time, Vajra Kali as symbolic of time, the Hindu Trimurti as symbolic of time, and if we consider the Naga King Vasuki as symbolic of time also, then we cannot deny what we are looking at here is an ancient version of the modern hard science fields of astrophysics and quantum mechanics. And of course also liberal arts like philosophy and theater. The three gods over past, present, and future of the Trimurti, the rough cube of space and the perfected cube over time concepts of Thoth, later called Hermes in Greek and as one of the seven Olympic gods called in Rome Mercury, and even the six loka reincarnative worlds wheel of Vajra are all geometrically depictable as symbols for stages in evolutionary development over time. The trinity is triangle, the cube is square, and the six lokas is a pentagon of five sides around a central sixth point within appear as the first symmetric self-similar polygons in two dimensions and the only three known to be useful in three dimensions in constructing regular polyhedral solids. The Gods Part 2 B 2 The Calendar of the Gods We shall begin by looking at the Shimham Farash that is the 72 letter long name of God just as there are the 99 names of Allah in Islam there are twelve names of God in Hakabalah, though there are more titles than official names. The words officially meaning name of God in Hebrew, Baal Shem, themselves have become a title. The twelve Baal Shema of the gods studied in Hakabalah are the monogrammata, Alpha and Omega or Tau, the Digramata, Yadhe equals Ja, Al equals Allah, etc., the Trigramata, I am equals Yadheva, Father equals Aba. The Tetragrammata, Yadhevade, Elohim, Adonai, etc. The Octogrammaton, A H D V N H A Y. The Decagrammaton, K T H R, Ch, K, M. B N H the dodecagrammaton a tripled tetragrammaton the fourteen letter name Adonai Elohino Adonai 
the 22 letter name Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yeshurun, the 33 letter name Adonai, El, Eloha, Elohim, Shaddai, Tseviot, Ehei, Yah, Yadhevadhe, the 42 letter name the Notericon of the Anabekeoch prayer and the 72 or 216 letter name, the Shimham Farash. The Shimham Farash, which we see in this 17th century printing by Athanasius Kircher, is either 72 or 216 letters long because it consists of 72 names of angels whose names are three letters long each. As we will come to see in a moment by studying the history of Shem Hamfarash, these 72 three letter long named angels accomplished many miracles, but most importantly we will come to understand how the original Shemham Farash acted as a symbolic calendar. By studying the history of this name of God, or Baal Shem, we will uncover the nature of this calendar's origins and learn the mechanisms of its use. This calendar, although originating in the era before the flood, was not considered a calendar of any gods then, it was the first form of attempt at the sort of calendars we use today, made by our earliest cave-dwelling hominid ancestors. It is thus important to remember that this calendar was originally invented by a cave person, one of our earliest Homo sapien ancestors, and is thus one of the most simple and primitive forms of calendar system we could imagine by now. However, it has, since its invention, been fictionally mythologized to such an extent that now it is considered a name of God and not a form of calendar. This occultation of right understanding of this system has been accomplished across the span of many eons by occult cults. Many of these cults have included members who have studied Kabbalah, However, the geopolitical deeds accomplished by other members of these same cults cannot be blamed on those members who studied Kabbalah while the others sought to rule the world. Suffice it to say, however, that by the time this ancient calendar was being studied by persecuted Kabbalists during the Inquisition era of the Dark Ages in Europe, in Tibet, this elaborate Tonka painting was created to express the six lokas, or worlds, into which a dead soul may reincarnate. We see the engine of this wheel of six lokas, a system the Buddhists call samsara, meaning suffering. It is comprised of the three base passions, the boar, passive complacency, equivalent to alchemical salt, the snake, slippery deceptiveness, equivalent to alchemical mercury, and the rooster, active annoyance, equivalent to alchemical sulfur. Around this engine of the wheel of six lokas, or of samsara, we see the philosopher sages ascending clockwise on the left and the tortured fools falling clockwise on the right. Beyond this are the six lokas, or realms inhabited by the different types of bodies into which we can choose to reincarnate. Like a roulette wheel is by luck, the spinning of the wheel of samsara stops for us on the world chosen for us by our karma, meaning labor, as in works or deeds. The six loka worlds of suffering are the animal, the philosopher, the sage, the fool, the lost soul, and the devil. The Buddha sees this all from above, including his own reflection in it, a like a pond of water 
and as his reflection ripples in the waves of all living karma, it assumes the visage of Vajra, the wrathful male Kali. Although it depicts the six lokas of samsara, this image should not be thought of in the same sense as the Western business calendar. The calendars employed in the Western business world are used to measure time on a day-to-day -day basis for scheduling when events will occur and for remembering when to change the clocks and when to celebrate what holidays. This system is entirely different from the one being shown us here in this Tibetan Tonka, and yet, because this Tonka is showing us effectively a mirror of all existence, it must also be able to be thought of as simulating a form of calendar. Insofar as it indicates the influence of karma as change to one's environment, brought about by one's own will, also the Western definition of magic, the six loka wheel of samsara does at least obliquely imply the presence in the model of the measurement of entropic change as time. Once we begin to see, through the looking glass, of our own ego's interpretation of this model, and to begin to see it as a calendar also, we will notice its six lokas divide a circle of 360 degrees into six even angles of 60 degrees each. The significance of this, that it divides a circle into six equilangular triangles of 60 degrees, will become clear once we begin to pursue the origins of the calendar of 360 days. Here we see the calendar as it was conceived of originally, by our most ancient Homo sapien ancestors, who dwelt in caves near Neanderthals and came to cross-culturally exchange customs with them. The Neanderthals apparently learned to bury their dead from early Homo sapiens. According to the legends from the beginnings of all the greatest empires of civilization in our current era of historical records, their ancestors before the deluge had met alien gods who had given early primitive mankind all the rudimentary implements of civilization, from making beads to smelting metal, from planting seeds to beating swords into plowshares. This calendar, the first of any kind of such, is attributed by myths at least as old as the times of King Solomon to the Genesis patriarch Enoch. Enoch was a descendant of Seth and Cain, who was taken off in a dream by an angelic guide and shown a prophetic vision. One aspect of Enoch's dream was a detailed description of a calendar with 364 days. This differs from the calendar we know to be accurate today that of 365 and one-fourth day long years. However, the calendar of Enoch was strictly specific in detailing this calendar of 364 days as being the original basis for the modern calendar of 365 and a quarter. We see here how the original Enochian calendar could be used to convert easily between the standard year of 365 days and the original calendar of only 360. The 360-day calendar divides into four seasons of 90 days each, which in turn each divide into three months of 30 days each, for a total of 12 months and 360 days. At the end of each season, a holiday is added, bringing the sum to the Enochian 364. Then, to bring the sum up to our own modern level of understanding, we add an annual holiday, 365.